fantasy football season. He has a few wide receivers I'd look to get on the waiver wire this week. The first guy, Marquez Valdez Scantling of the Green Bay Packers. So Valdez Scantling throughout his career, it's been a couple huge games and then games where he disappears and you don't hear much from him. But in this one in week 11 at the Minnesota Vikings, four catches, 123 yards, and a touchdown on 10 targets. So the last few games here for Valdez Scantling, week 9, at the Kansas City Chiefs, two catches, 19 yards. Week 10 versus the Seattle Seahawks, one catch, 41 yards. And then week 11, like I mentioned, the 123 and a touchdown. So right here, it was good to see him have 10 targets in this game. He's in a high-powered offense with one of the best quarterbacks in the league, obviously, with Aaron Rodgers. And they just fell short in this one. But that 75-yard touchdown he had tied the ball game late in the fourth quarter. But obviously, Kirk Cousins and the Vikings drove down and won the game. So right now... As a bench wide receiver or a third wide receiver option, I think it's a decent ant to get Valdez Scantlin. Like I mentioned, he's with a good quarterback, and maybe Rodgers is going to trust him more after the big game he had in this one. And he's available in 91% of fantasy week. The next wide receiver I look to get on the waiver wire this week is Marquise Goodwin of the Chicago Bears. So we haven't heard this name in a very long time is Marquise Goodwin. A few seasons ago with the San Francisco 49ers, he definitely was fantasy relevant. But ever since then, he really has bounced around the league and has done nothing. But in this game, in week 11, he had a big catch from Andy Dalton with about a minute, a minute and a half left to put the Bears up on top in the fourth quarter. He had four catches, 104 yards in the touchdown versus the Baltimore Ravens. So Goodwin, he hasn't done much this season. The last few games for him, week eight, Versus San Francisco, two catches, 32 yards. Week 9 at Pitt, one catch, 50 yards. And then week 11, the breakout game for him. So right here, week 12, it looks like Dalton's going to start, especially the quick turnaround here for the Bears, playing on Thanksgiving. And Dalton, we know he's more the traditional quarterback who's going to stay in the pocket, look to hit his wide receivers. And if Allen Robinson's out again on Thursday, Marquise Goodwin's going to have a decent role once again. And he's definitely still a deep ball threat. This guy could burn secondaries. He could be a playmaker. And right now, he's available in 100% of fantasy leagues. And he's definitely a wide receiver I would take a look at on the wire this week. The next wide receiver is Nelson Aguilar of the New England Patriots. And Nelson Aguilar, he's been up and down for him this season with this Patriot team. And I've said it in many videos that this Patriot team is a defense and run first offense type of team here this year. And that's why they're having a good year built on the D in the run game and throwing the ball to the tight ends more often than not. But the last few games here for Aguilar, week 9 at Carolina, he didn't play. Week 10 versus Cleveland, 2 catches, 21 yards. And week 11 at the Falcons, 5 catches, 40 yards, and a touchdown. So right here in week 12, another good matchup for Aguilar versus the Tennessee Titans that give up the most fantasy points to wide receivers on the season. We just saw the Houston Texans go into Tennessee and beat them with the same type of operation. So right now, Aguilar is available in a whopping 79% of fantasy leagues. And if you need wide receiving help, I think he's a good add this week on the wide. The next wide receiver is Jamison Crowder of the New York Jets. Of the Jets here, they look pretty decent, the offense. I know Miami's not a great team as well. But Crowder had one of the better games of the season for him. Six catches, 44 yards, and a touchdown with Joe Flacco behind center in this one. So the last few games here for Crowder. Week 9 at the Colts, five catches, 38 yards. Week 10 versus Buffalo, three catches, 20 yards. And week 11 versus Miami, like I mentioned, six for 44 and a touchdown. So right here, week 12 of Houston, a pretty decent matchup. Indoor game, Flacco, I assume, is going to start once again. And these guys had a decent rapport from last season as well when Flacco was in his first stint with the Jets. So right here, Crowd is available in a wide amount of fantasy leagues at 80%. And him and Flacco have a good rapport. And he still can make some plays, in my opinion, as Crowder. And he's definitely worth an ad, especially with a good matchup in Week 12 and the fifth and final wide receiver. I look to get on the wave of wide this week's Brook Akeen. So right here, Nick Westbrook Akeen had a good ball game. In week 11 here for the Tennessee Titans. Seven catches for 107 yards. And right here, the wide receivers are dropping like flies right now for this Titan team. We saw in this one Marcus Johnson go down. We saw A.J. Brown get banged up and leave the game in the fourth quarter with a chest injury. And we know Julio Jones is going to be out 
a few more weeks with him on IR. So right here, Westbrook Akeen, he looked good in this one. And right here, he's a decent playmaker. We've seen some flashes from him early in the season. But now if he's going to get an expanded role, which I think he will, especially for Week 12's ball game in New England, with their bye week in Week 13, I could see Brown and Marcus Johnson out in this game. And Julio's obviously out already on IR. So right now, Westbrook Akeen, he's available in 100% of fantasy leagues. And on a team that's got pretty much no wide receivers, this guy could be possibly a starter next week for Tennessee, no doubt about it. And a good flex option for fantasy owners. That's a few wide receivers I look to get on the waiver wire heading into week 12 of the fantasy football season.